Kia ora tātou. <laughs> Whakawhenua, or just sweaty feet, hey. He maori a hau, hoi anō, koe rā te tahi waku mahi. Kia tīmata, kia kōkiri, uh, i roto i te kaupapa. How can you follow that act though? That was amazing. Katoa mātou kei muri rā e, wiri wiri ana ngā pōna me te whakaaro e kare. <laughs> hoi anō, here we go. Kei ko nei mata ngā tamariki, o te kohanga reo whānau, tēnei te whare whānau e, mō ngā tamariki haututu e, whakarongo o mō kopunama, ki te reo rangatira e, ka tia te kuaha e noho, e noho ki te te whakarongo, e noho ki te whakarongo. Whakaturia, tōringa, mehe mea koe e mōhio ana, kwa rongo rāne i te rā wai ata. Hands up if you've heard that song, or you know it. Kapu, huiki, that's awkward. No, kei te pai, kei te pai. E hara, that's actually one of the first Waiata, I remember hearing and learning back in the day of the pa padded shoulder power suits, the leg warmers, the leotards, and of course, the stubbies. <laughs> no, not at all. It was the 80s when Madonna, you know, she released Like a Virgin, Bon Jovi was living on a prayer, and when Michael Jackson first performed this iconic move. All right, many of you probably know those style songs and the singers, but me, kareko, I was immersed in this. Here in Melbourne, koe a tētahi waku tino kai wai a tai roto i te ao nei kamutu mātou ngā tamariki kōhanga reo o ngā tau waru te kau. I grew up on Here in Melbourne music. Every wai a ta in his catalogue of toi api api i ākona e mātou no mātou e tamariki ana. But back to that song that I was singing before, it's not a Here in classic, but of course it is one of many wai a ta we learned as tamariki kōhanga reo. Koe nei te tau. Whāngahuru, kwa eke ai te kaupapa ki tōna whāngahurutanga, 40 years since te kohanga reo movement began way back in 1982 at a hui that was held uh, ki wai whetū marae nga karapuke tapu nureira a nei a hau e tungo, tungo ana a e mihi ana ki o mātou mātua tīpuna kei aku whakatamara hiki te rangi, aku whakateitei ki te whenua, tēnā koutou. Kohanga reo is where my reo journey begins. And probably fourth from the left is me. It's about 1986 and fresh out of Kawiro. <laughs> My mom, her parents, her siblings started up a kohangareo at what was set in high school back in those days, but you'll probably know it now as Western Springs College. It was a Fano legacy, our kohana led by my kuro, Hori Te po. His vision, like many other kaumātua back in those days, was for te reo, mungā tikanga, uh, and tuakiri Māori to thrive in a world that didn't want it, nor did they support it. Of course, it was the 80s. Kuro is my hero. That's my nan. She looks grumpy, but she wasn't. <laughs> it's my kuro, Hori Te po. Koe a taku tuahangata, koe a taku uh, ihopu manawa ihorei mo te reo me ngā tikanga. He was my first ever reo idol. Nā nā taku reo i whāngai mai ki au, ki aku tuakana, ki taku whānau, kamutu ki te hapuri Māori o ngā puna o wai o rea i te rā rā, e rā tau. O tira, nā raiwa ko tana ipo, ko taku nēn, te reo i whāngai, me ngā tikanga i whāngai ki a mātou. Koro was a staunch tūhoe and a devout ringatū, dedicated to mātua whāngai and pūā o te atatū, and he led our whānau at every hui Māori, especially ngā hui atūhoi. He was a bit like old Taff, Taffy, 
Well, Sergeant Tafaro, aka Cliff Curtis, and Muru. Hands up if you've seen Muru. Oh, y'all need to go and see that. Mehari kotoka mataki. Now, like Taffy, Koro drove the Kohanga van and at times our whānau uh, bus, taking us to hui up and down Tika Māori. He wasn't a policeman though, Kyle. He was worse. <laughs> <laughs> Much worse. He upheld the law, L-O-R-E, and policed tikanga Māori. He apiha munga tikanga. Koro was feared just as much as he was loved. One trip we made on the Fano bus with no seats or belts was going to the unveiling of uh, the Tokafaka Mahara, uh, the memorial stone for our waka Matatsua up in Taco Bay in 1986. We started performing uh, at the Koro Neihana, uh, and I was about four at the time. Oh, it's my sister. Another one, on one of our trips was up to Waitangi in the early 90s, and that was the first time I ever saw police in riot gear up against our people, confronting our people, our people confronting them back. Imagine that, being about six, seven, and all your nannies, aunties, and uncles just going handy at the police, and the police not budging. It was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. But, you know... Then Kurosa Mukopuna, you got told to just sit, don't say anything. You know, you had to do what the crow was told you to do, and that was it, pretty much. Koro opened all of our eyes to the Ao Māori. He was a great storyteller and an even better uh, master at spinning a teka o ten. <laughs> Koro was old school, and he lived by the old ways. I remember the knock on the wall. Is that familiar to anyone? A koroa, it's the middle of the night. There's a knock on the wall, not the door. Kao, ke te pai. That's when you know to sit up straight, even if you're in the middle of your dream, whatever it's about, you gotta sit up straight up against the wall. That memory is etched and ingrained in my psyche and my tinana katoa taku wairua, ko te tohu te rao te karakia, te atapo. Even to this day, Anytime someone knocks, I'm like, or the spoon taps on the table. Ne, he ahua tanga Māori tērā. Nā koe te whakapākanga, I was the youngest of our whānau, uh, my reanga, especially back when koro was still alive, and I got to follow my koro. So anyway, I remember koro would go duck shooting at times, he'd go hunting and fishing, and then there was this one time when he came home with a whole lot of bush rats. Kia ore. Chucking them on the barbecue, this is no joke. He came home with real big bush rats, waved them around in front of us and said, this is kai mo te po, and I remember, ruaki. Straight away, I was like, kahore. <laughs> and then he started teasing us by running after us with these kiore. <laughs> so that was him. He really was old school. No te puihi, no te waimana kaku, no tūhoi. He tūhoi kai kiore. It didn't end there, though, oh no. Old Koro Iron Guts made the classic Kanga Piro, Koura Mara, Troi, and the rest that I dare not say was disgusting because if Koro were here, he'd kick my butt. Don't insult your kai, or it'll come back to bite you. His backbone, of course, was my nan, a woman of very few words, ultimate grace, and compassion. She looked after us. They were complete opposites, but they made it work. And Nan was our queen. They had 11 tamariki. 11. We are struggling with one, two, three these days, but 11 tamariki, my Nan and my koro, raised them all in a two-bedroom house with one bathroom and a shower on the outside called a hose. <laughs> True story. And a whare on the Kauro Straits in Onepu. And even some of our cousins were raised there as well. Our world was shattered when our koro passed away in 1996, and I was just 12. While I faintly remember the sound of his voice, what I've held on to all these years was the special bond I had with my koro. Kamutsu, ko te reo tērā. Karekau taku koro i kōrero pākeha ki au, ua ua rawaka kōrero pākeha mai i a kia hau. 
He very rarely spoke English to me, and if he, or when he did, I'd look at him sideways and say, koro, korero Māori. And he'd grin, his cheeky grin, with, you know, just grin and grin and with little effort, say something real profound like, tai atu nen. Hoi anō, that was him, itzi te kupu, nui te korero. He tino whakatau ki te rai roto i a mātou o tūhoe. So when he did speak, it was with such conviction that he too com commanded the room with an implausible depth of knowledge and expertise in the ways of old. So losing koro was hard for all of us, my nan especially. I was fortunate though that I got to carry on te kura kaupapa. Well, there they are. I went to three kura including Waipareira, te kura kaupapa Māori o Waipareira, te kura kaupapa Māori o Maunga Fau, and te whare kura o Hwani Waititi Marae. Teenager by then, a naughty one at that. It was then that I met one of Koro's relations, a humble, generous, amazing, wise Koroa, who many of you here might know. Mum and my stepdad, Gary, they joined Te Wakahuia in 1994. And that was the start of kapahaka professional life for my sister and I. During the week, we practiced at Farekura at Hwani Waititi, and on the weekends, we'd go to practice with Te Wakahuia uh, at, usually, out at GI. Koro Ngāpō took me under his wings. This isn't a kumara, I'm telling you a real story. Koro Ngāpō took me under his wings and encouraged me to write and compose. I was shy. You might not believe it, but I was a really shy kid. And the only way where I would actually light up and be happy and my real authentic shell, uh, self come out of my shell was actually when I spoke te reo Māori and got to write. So towards the end of my farikura days, Ngāpō wehi kurubab, he would come and pick me up from my whare, take me to a couple of hui with him, and tell me to write. I loved our conversations on the waka. He kōrero Māori noi ho mai wa kia mai wa. He'd come, Rini, piggy mai, jump in the car. We're going, I don't know where we're going, but you know, you don't ask questions when you're with koro ngāpō. we in his van, he's just like, okay. Our convos were always the best. Kei te pēhā koe, Rini. Kei te pai koro. Kei te pēhā te kura. Kāri te pai koro. Ne? How high? Kāre au i te rata ki te, ki te kura koro. Ha, ah, ka pai. Kwa tīmata koe i au mahi a kāinga, kāre anō. Oh, wow, well, then we go to his whare and he'd make me do my homework. And one of the homeworks that he actually helped me do was write a manu kōrero, a speech. He helped me the year I got picked to represent our kura at the regional Ngā Manu Kōrero. I was up against Tafiri Matthew Williams. Was, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I received, oh, that's Kōrero receiving his award from the former Governor General, Anand Satyanan. I researched and spoke about the late Tirangi Aniwa Niwa John Tirangi Ho. Kōrero, of course, knew him quite intimately. I'm in Nan. I came third that year and was really relieved because it meant I didn't have to go to nationals. I really hated public speaking. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> but Kuro Bab kept encouraging me. Na na hoi whakatena tena i aki. He empowered me. He'd say, Rene, kai akwe, kai akwe te reo. And so I carried on writing and speaking. He stood me up one time in front of the whole of the wakahuia and he made me do my speech. Everybody else had to sing solos, but no, Koro gets me up and I was like, I can't sing. He goes, go, fai kōrero. I like, what? <laughs> so I did, because you listen to your elders. That's the way we were taught. So Katsuo, on the spot, did my thing, turned around, looked around the room, and there were tears on all the elders' faces, ngā mea pākeke, ngā aunties, me ngā uncles. And then they got up and all performed and sung a song. Kuro Bab said to everyone, koi nei te āpōpō, kwa tātou tamariki, kei ngā kura kaupapa Māori. He kōrero Māori. So a very profound akuranga nō kue tamariki ana e taiohi ana, 
Another time I remember was Koro Bab telling us, always, actually, he'd get us in the room and go, all right, hands up, whakatungia o koutou ringa, me he mea kai te ora tonu o koutou kaumātua. If you've got two sets of parents, grandparents, raise your hand. Only half the room maybe would raise their hands. I would. They're like, yes! I got my nanny and my koro and my koro and, oh, not that nanny. He'd say, yes, I'm part of this. He goes, kapai, you're the lucky ones. And I'd be like, yes, I'm lucky. Why am I lucky? I didn't get it. Next question was, keep your hand up if you have both your parents. Kapai. Then it kind of just went on and went on, and then soon enough you saw all the elders, uh, older ones put their hands down, and it was just us rangatahi who had our hands still up, and he says, he tohu tēnei kai te huri te ao. I remember that because it was quite profound, and I only really sunk, it only really sunk down, well, I comprehended it recently. How te tikanga o te rā kōrero. So yeah, Kuru would say you're lucky if you've got grandparents. Well, you're lucky if both your parents are alive and you're lucky if both your grandparents, sets of grandparents are still alive. Because for many of us, we don't have them anymore. And for me, that's very much true. Last year, this is my mum. I mate e ia. I'm not going to cry. Hoi anō. Um, he nui. He nui te āputa te kōhao kei ruto i tō mātou whānau i tōna ngaroha ngātū. Nō reira au kā ki, e hara au i te waimari e i tēnei wā. Ka whakāru a ke āhau, ki taku whakatipuranga, taku whakareanga. So my generation, the little kōhanga kids at Kōhana in the 1980s, pretty much every single one of us have lost our grandparents and are losing our parents. That's us. So, i te kura reo, recent kura reo i ōtaki. E noho ana i te krahe i te akuranga o tīmotse, tā tīmotse. Wiri, wiri ana ngā pōna, kahore, kahore, kai te pai. Kaua māma a ki akuraua, kei kō rero atu, don't tell him. <laughs> Hoi anō, he mentioned, we, it was a wānanga, it wasn't actually really, you know, studying. He just wanted to talk to us about our thoughts, a wānanga, about kaumātua. Ka mea mai a ti mōti, ko koutou, ngā tamariki o ngā kura kaupapa Māori, i puta i ngā kura kaupapa Māori, ko koutou, ngā kaumātua o te wāne. We, my generation, you, are the grandparents, are the elders of today. Kei a koutou te ora rāne, te mate rāne, o tō tātou reo, o tō tātou ao Māori, Haere nei te wā. I'm barely 40 and I'm like, I'm not a kaumātua. <laughs> but whakaro hia tērā. He, he pono tā koroua. Tiro hia ngā pai pai, tiro hia ngā marae, tiro hia ngā hapuri. Ko tino iti haere o tātou kaumātua. And kā tangi au i tērā. The reason why I'm sharing my story of my koro, including koro bab, is because I feel that at the ripe age of 38, I find myself asking quite often, what would my koro say? Like many of us, I've had life thrown at me, left, right, centre, in every direction you could think of. As a Māori kid, a Māori wo woman, he wahine Māori maumoko kauai, a teen mother, an aspiring broadcaster, a damn, a human being. I've been challenged by life, and each time I see and I feel and I hear my kuro. So I ask, what would kuro say? What would he do? How would he feel? When I received my moko kauai, in my whare orua taupare, ki koko hino marae te teko, ngā tiawa, yeah. You don't know where that is, on the way to Whakatane, in between Whakatane and Kauerau. <laughs> yeah, so this is three years ago almost, and Katangia taku kaua, ko taku mama i reira, a tinana, engari, ka ki te tahi wa ku aunties kiao. She's there with the moko kaua. Her and I are now whakapapa on my mum's side, ko mai wa nake ngā kanohi mataora o te whānau. Kamutu he rua rau mātou, ne. 
Ka ki mai a ki au, babe, ka tai mai ngā tipuna. Tau a wā tonu, ka matsuru i honga roi matai roto i au me te whakaaro, au e, ka nui tēne. So yeah, I had a big fat tangi on the table. Um, yeah, he fe ki te taku, auntie. And I knew right then it was really important, not just, not for me, but for my whanau in terms of our healing. And it's the first time as an adult I truly believed in the kōrero, our tipuna are always around us, they sit on our shoulders, and they're never far away from us. So when I'm confronted with things like this, much like Pere, much like Te Rauhiringa and everybody else who have hekis come at you, um, you know, I ask myself, what would Koro say? He would laugh, honestly. I just can just hear him going, <laughs> what do they know? And the thing is, you know, it's not so much asking my, what would my Koro say, but what would I say? I know my Koro would have also dropped a few C-bombs and F-bombs, <laughs> but with Nan's guidance, I'm pretty sure he would say something more diplomatic, like, Kia kaha koe, e moko, haere tonu. Haia ha atu mau, ngā whakatake, ngā hahani, hate hunga penei ia David. <laughs> There's the koe I really idolised as a kid. She scared the hibijibis out of me. She had big glasses. She was tiny like me. She had no tamariki though and no ngāti awa. She will always be one of my heroes for this reason. You're regarded as the tanifa of te reo Māori. Is that because you are a fearsome advocate for more people of speaking course. La language? Of course, mm. because I know what it is like to be able to do both things. I consider myself absolutely bilingual and bicultural, and that's the way our country should head. And what? Tiga ne. Te kuia nei ko Media Simpson. Karangahia ia hei tani fa mo te reo. She was even more scarier than te mo te karetu. Maharau, pono. Maharau i tētahi o ngā kurare o tuatahi i tai atu au. I haere mai te taurā whiri ki ngā whare kura o rā kaumanga o Waititi me rua toki. Nā, ka tau patu patu rā au in front of us and we were like, oh, get the popcorn out, this is amazing. And she scolded him in front of us and we were like, oh, oh my gosh. Kau e aro ki te rā koe ahe koe a. Anu anu te rā, you know, there was two more two and she, but she did, she was wicked. If you got your diction wrong in English and Māori, you had a ruler thrown at your head or a pen. Koe rā te nui o tana aroha ki te ao Māori, ki te reo Māori ki ngā tikanga. Corporal punishment, pono. Hoi anō. E u nei te reo i roto i au, he mea wepu au ki te reo. Hoi anō, yeah. Media Simpson. It is easy for me to walk both paths, which is more than you can say for yourself. Well, <laughs> well, well I like the challenge, and you certainly learned on it. Fair say. That's on national TV. When this was not okay, when being brown was not, never seen on TV. Ua ua kā ki te te reo Māori, te kanohi Māori, te rei te reo Māori. You know, we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. Now, I don't know if I have the balls to be as staunch and as brave as Nana Media. Tino kore nei. But seeing this is a reminder of who was here before us, what they stood for, and what, why we should continue the fight for our deal and the freedom to live as our authentic selves as Māori. Ka pātai mai e tahi. Hea tō, you know, me pea koe turaki e rā hahani, you know. How do you get through the um, complaints, the opposition, the hate, the vitriol? And I'm like, if you were alive back then, back in her day, We've got, you know, there's no comparison. I ora rātou i te wā, i kōhurutia he Māori mo te kōrero i tana reo. Hoi anu e te whānau, I'm getting to the end. And that is that I began my kōhau tonight with a song about my name, my nan. 
well, it's not about my nan. My nan was the one who sung that song to me while I was at Kohanga Reo. Um, and this year, we mark 40 years of the Kohanga Reo. We also mark, ai, he tino hirahira te kaupapa. We also mark 35 years or so of te kura kaupapa Māori, te ahumatsua. 50 years of their matatini. Ne? And of course, 50 years since Hanate Hemara, Jackson at the time, Ngata Matua, Te Huingara uh, Tawira, and Ngakai Fakapuma i Tereo Māori presented a petition with more than 30,000 signatures, half of which, more than half, were Pākeha, supporting the call for Te Reo Māori to be made compulsory, actually to be made accessible in schools. They wanted Te Reo and Māori culture to be taught at schools 50 years ago. They started the journey. I'm a product of that journey, of those movements, and I continue that journey today. I roto katoa i aku mahi. A tinana a wairua a hine ngaro, a hakoa i runga i te atamira, runga rāna i te paua ka whakata, i aku haere katoa, ka Māori tonu au, au te pō, pō te au. In honour of our tipuna and all their mahi and for my own tamariki, who one day I look forward to providing a refuge for, like my kōhanga, te whakamānu. Koe rā taku huarahi, reo, what does that say? Anyway, aku mokopuna, mo te wā, katai mai rātou. A kāti he kāka noa hau i ruia mai rangi ātea e kore au e ngaro. He uria hau no ngai tū hoe ngāti awa ngāti tū wharetoa ngāti rangi tihi. He pii i pīrere, he pii pii i pīrere i te kōhanga reo. He rau kura no roto mai o ngā kura kaupapa Māori. He ahoa hau no te koro wai o te ahumatsua. Te reo shapes who I am. It's not something I learn, it's in me, it's on me, it's, it is me. It's my kāpehu, or my guiding compass. E mōhi o ai au, ko hea taku tūranga hākoa, ko hea taku whenua taurikura, taku whakaruru hau. Ara, ko te reo, taku kāinga. Kia ki pēnei a ke a hau, ko te reo taku kāpehu, ko te reo taku hono tā ngai ngai ki te onamata, ki te inamata, ki te anamata. It's my connection to my koro to my nan, and to my future generation. Koe nei taku arero tīpuna, te motukia, te wetekia, a, ko tāku kia koutou te hunga whakarongo, to those of you who have joined us here tonight, my message to you is whether you're just starting out on your own real journey, or you're on it for the long haul, just like me, and my whanau, please don't give up. Don't let a David or a Karen or a whoever throw you off your game. <laughs> or even a real Nazi who goes, Kai te he, kai te he, kai te he, ka ore. Fiua ki te Hey, just fiua, kai te pai. And if you're wrong, oh well, learn. <laughs> kai te pai. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're wrapping it up. Look. Bottom line is, there's no need to keep up with the Joneses or even strive for material, uh, for material goods in life. Yeah, I've gone way over. We. <laughs> our tipuna was simple. The world wants what we have: our ind indigeneity, our matauranga, and now our real. We have to protect it, not from them, but from the essence of our real being lost to a, to foreign hands. Te reo is much more than a language written in books at iwi or studied at school. It's a living language. E ora ai te reo, me kōrero. From the womb of my mother to the womb of, my, of Mother Earth, Papa Tuānuku, my te whenua ki te whenua. My language is my refuge, always and forever. Kia ora.